to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sherry. Co-host Rich Gear here with you, and uh, Doug, I guess we're going to talk a little bit about Arizona, huh? A little bit about Arizona, a little bit about geology, yep. and uh, our friend Guy Forsyth, who has a ministry called Crying Rocks. And uh, I think it's interesting that he gives it that name, because the rocks cry out, of course, according ah. to the, uh, the Bible. Uh, if uh, if the testimony of other people uh, doesn't come through, you have the testimony that's in in the geology of uh, of the rocks. Right. Yep. Now I, I've been thinking about this, and uh, geology barely qualifies as a science in my mind. <coughs> and the, and the reason is is that uh, you, there's about ten percent of it where you're actually going out and looking at. Uh, Rocks and uh, identifying these rock formations and, uh, and well, cataloging them, but you do have uh, then uh, a whole lot of speculation. The other ninety percent is speculation as how the, those rocks came to be uh, and get in that area. You really can't go uh, and back in time and uh, and figure out how how things uh, occurred. Well, that's the same thing with anything, Doug. That any of the sciences that that uh, try to go back in time before anybody was around to witness what happened and they have their theories uh, in event. Paleontology is the same way. Uh, right. Cosmology is the same way. They, they're always doing that. But I mean, the geology at least has oil. They, they, they do have oil, especially based on geological deposits. And, and they can name rocks and, and, and they can, and, 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 but the thing is that we've always said that the difference between regular science, which is deals with evidence in the present and makes postulates and, and theories based on the present. Historical geology is the same thing that with paleontology and all the rest of it. Right. They try to extrapolate into the past <clears throat> something of which they, they, uh, they, they've never, they, they weren't there, they can't take a time machine, and they have no uh, witnesses to tell you how things happen, unless it's the recent past, okay? I mean, we, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, we can, we can tell, talk about Pompeii and Vesuvius, we can talk about Mount Etna, volcanic stuff, we can talk about tsunamis, that kind of stuff is fine, as long as there's historical witness. The creationist, on the other hand, believes we have an eyewitness of how it happened, right, okay? Yeah. And has told us what happened. And even <coughs> after that, with a lot of the flood geology that we talk about, uh, there were eyewitnesses to that too, and they wrote down what happened. They didn't say they didn't say how everything was formed, and I, and so I don't have a problem with that kind of stuff. But the reality is, when you when you deal with things that have that are really antithetical to what the testimony says happened, i.e., uh, there was not a worldwide flood. There was a bunch of local floods over over millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years of periods of time. Uh, well, that's that's going far and away away from what the the eyewitness account says actually happened, or the formation in the very beginning. Obviously, no one was there for that except God. Okay, the one who made it. If you say everything was just random chance or happenstance, uh, then you're just basically. It's to me, it's a, it's a pig and a poke, Doug. It's just, you're, you are. You're doing what you just said. They're they're making it up, and and they're trying to make theories. And I'm we're being a little blip here. I, I mean, they do make theories and they try to make postulates. And some things have a have a an appearance of explanatory power, and some of them have a, have a uh, some modic a, a little modicum of success predicting things, but not a whole lot really, Doug. I mean, right. when you really get it, we've talked many many times about the vaunted uh, geologic column, which virtually is non-existent. Okay, as far as any any, it should be should be everywhere. And it's really not. So uh, yeah, let, me, let me talk about well, that for a second, and, and this was yeah, uh, pointed out it. a number of years ago by our friend uh, John Wood Morapi, who uh, right. uh, did an exhaustive study of the uh, flood of, of the geology of, of the world, and uh, and uh, he pointed out that the, in the, uh, almost all of the cases, uh, he pointed out a, a, a few spots where. Uh, the entire geologic column is present, but uh, uh, there's uh, strata that's missing. There's uh, uh, there's uh, many areas where the entire Paleozoic is missing. There's uh, and you can and of course, how many times have we seen upside down 
uh, strata, not only missing strata, we got stuff, you got upside down missing strata. You got some things will have Precambrian on top of Cenozoic or, or Cretaceous, well, or nothing so in between, or really. Yeah, well, we were there near South Mountain. Now you could see South Mountain from Chandler where we were yeah. uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Outside of Phoenix, uh, yeah. Outside of Phoenix, that's the, the mountain that had all the radio towers on, on top right, of it. Right, right, right. And that mountain is upside down. The top layer is Precambrian. The bottom layer is tertiary. Yeah. And so you have the entire <laughs> geologic column missing and upside down in this particular spot. And uh, I presume the ge geologists have an e explanation for it, or they make up a story about that. Because, it's, but yeah, it's too huge. There's no, there's no evidence of sliding or, I mean, it, it, the, the idea of pushing a, an entire mountain across and, you know, grinding, there should be evidence of grindings and, mm -hmm. and but there, I mean, but you've got hundreds of millions of years of time that's missing. And that makes no sense to having something, you have to set a whole mountain uplifted, moved over. We ran that and up in Glacier National Park, the same thing with, uh, right. uh, what's this called? Um, uh, what's the Empire, or no, is it an Empire? What's the it, Lewis, uh, Lewis Overthrust. Overthrust, yeah. Yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, Maya Mountains is down by Tucson. And so that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> kind of an interest. And that's where you have, uh, uh, let me see if I remember it. It is uh, Permian on top of Cretaceous in the Empire Mountains. And they're yeah. sort of meshed together kind of like this, you know. Yeah. Where the, the two, the strata are, uh, are have this undulating contact line. Which to me indicates it was formed when it was still plastic. Mm -hmm. When it was still water, a lot of water. And this is the kind of stuff, and Doug, you've talked about how many times you've seen strata that's separated by many, many miles, but seems to go underground. The one, what's the one place out in, uh, that was in Nevada? Was that where, where, where the sun, what the, uh, the, the, the Valley of Fire Valley in Red Rock, in Red Rock, yeah. And now you haven't been out there. I've not been there, no. I've seen yeah, that, that's, I've been there three times, and uh, uh, the top layer is. Uh, uh, Cambrian, which is uh, one of the older layers. Well, it's but the oldest except for Precambrian. And yeah. then you have Jurassic, Triassic, Permian underneath. Yeah. And that same uh, out of order rock sequence exists in the Valley of Fire State Park, which is about 75 miles to the north and east. And mm -hmm. so the question is uh, how, how is this possible? Uh, it, it, and in the middle of it is uh, actually a, a Precambrian mountain. Uh, there's a <laughs> Frenchman mountain sitting over in the um, eastern side of Las Vegas. Be Doug, a lot of it has to do because we really get right down to it. Why? How they determine the the age of these rocks or what kind of rocks they are has very little to do with the composition of the rocks. Mm -hmm. It has to do everything with the fossils in the rocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there, every once in a while they'll. They'll try to do a, a radiometric dating of, of an intrusion, mm -hmm. of, of an igneous rock, a volcanic rock that's in there. And they'll go, okay, that helps uh, calibrate. But most of the time it has to do, well, I found a triceratops, so that must be Cretaceous. Right, yeah. I found a fish in here, so that must be Ordovician or, or Silurian or the, with the amphibians. Uh, and that, that's the thing, there's, there's hundreds of millions of years of period of time. If you got Cambrian on top of the would you say Jurassic, uh, tri uh, Triassic, Jurassic, and, and Cretaceous? Jurassic, and Triassic, per Permian. Jurassic's on top of the Triassic? Because Triassic, in, in the geologic column, comes first, generally. Then comes Jurassic and then Cretaceous. Permian's after that, okay? So you're skipping Cretaceous, no Cretaceous in there? Uh, there's no Cretaceous, no. There. See, this, yeah. It's it, all mixed up. So what, and what, I would, I would say that the creations have talked about years for what's called hydrodynamic soaring. Mm -hmm. What happened to be living in a certain ecological niche at the time. And yeah, generally certain creatures live in, the, in certain areas, some in other areas. But with a worldwide flood, things are going to get mixed from time to time. And, and who's to say from my migration patterns before the flood, the, the animals move from one place to another. We don't know any of that thing either ourselves, but we do have a witness that says the world was flooded uh, completely covered with water one time and that we know what what local floods do doug and they are very damaging we we see what happens when you see a tsunami come in and wipe out a coastline of a, of a, of a country like indonesia or even japan right yeah. with things like that you see what happens and that's fairly local and now you're talking about a flood that covers the entire world oh well, boy 
Yeah, here's my idea of what uh, might have happened in like the, in the Valley of Fire and the, the Red Rock Canyon is that you have uh, these uh, uh, these two different uh, sides of, of the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean uh, merging here in the flood where you have the tides uh, pushing one set of, uh, uh, sure. of fossils over on this, this end and then you have another set where it pushes the, the okay. these fossils over on top of oh, it. Right, yeah. And the, the sorting part of it, well, you have the Cambrian, you basically have bottom dwelling uh, sea creatures. Right, yes, clams. You know, what you see in the, <laughs> uh, in the fossil right. record is uh, uh, on the bottom, well, you have clams all throughout the, That's true. Uh, the strata. But uh, uh, these particular things are, are basically you know, bottom uh, dwelling creatures, you know, trilobites, and the, uh, which is actually a fairly complex. Yeah, the eye of a trilobite is really com complex. And so uh, that's the question: is uh, um, uh, is there anything in the uh, geology that uh, actually uh, refutes the, the biblical record in terms of the flood? I really don't think that. Uh, I, I think that the flood explanation is a lot better. And what you know, Guy was doing, uh, we took a, a little hike up to a place called Lizard Head Rock. <laughs> and and uh, you were sort of gimping behind. Oh man, I had a bad time. My knee was so messed up. <coughs> and uh, just, it still hurts now. But uh, I, I, was, I told Doug, I says, man, I'm not used to being the last guy in the trail. I'm not used to being the guy getting voted off the island because I'm the weakest link, man. Because I tell you, that day, I, and I, I, I made it up. And I made it back, but it was it hurt all the way. But you guys, so I didn't get the lecture. I, I was kind of kind of passed out. Yeah, well, what he was doing, though, he was talking about. Uh, we actually hiked up to this, a saddle in the mountain. You know, there's a mountain up here and a mountain over here. Right. And then the you know, there was the valley on either side, and so we yeah. were in that saddle and we were looking at the, the lizard head rock, and that's actually a. a uh, it has a parabolic fold in it, actually two of them, uh, yeah. one on one side on the on the lizard head, and another one on on the uh, on the rock that faces it. Uh, and so, what do you call lizard head? Does it, does it look like a lizard? Yeah, it does look like a lizard, okay. and, and it looks like it has a beak, and uh, okay. it, is, it is kind of cool. But the uh, the other thing he was pointing out was what he called seismites. And seismites is where uh, you can see that the strata goes along like this and then sort of lifts up like this and down again like oh, that. Oh, like a seismograph. Yeah, I, well, uh, and uh, it's seismite because it's an indication of there was, a, there was an earthquake. Okay. And it actually compresses the strata up above it. And so it, uh, you know, the, the you can see the strata up above it are still fairly straight across, but this uh, shift up here uh, you know, shows, and there was like a white uh, layer that uh, it shifted up sure, to yeah. where it was. Uh, and so he was explaining that um, you know the uh, part of the flood geology is to understand that the rocks were uh, when they were laid down were fairly soft and pliable right. and uh, a lot of plastic as we like to say pl and and plastic earthquakes and, you know and that happens Dougie, when it, during an earthquake it can kind of make make the, the ground kind of do some strange stuff yeah. but water really does it you know when the thing has not been lithified yet not turned into rock it, it's still still uh, it, it before it gets cemented together and hardened that's the other thing Doug. the way that the, the, the classic geology talks mm -hmm. these things have to be each layer would be dry for hundreds and thousands of years. So there should be evidence of sliding, if you have upside down strata or mixing, there should be evidence of something. And you rarely get it, you know, except in small local areas. You'll, be, you'll find overthrusts and you'll find, you know, uh, you know, one of the, you know overthrusts and, and, and uh, different unconformities and nonconformities. You'll find that stuff, in, but it's small little areas. It's not like you're going to find them in, in mountains, you know, but yet that's what they call them because they are, they're not, they're not fitting what they think should, they should be seeing, you know, but it's based on what they find in the layers. 
you know? Yeah, I was taken to task by uh, one guy who was a creationist on the, that uh, I was pointing out that uh, he, he sort of believed that uh, even the large-scale overthrusts were, were real, that uh, they were uh, caused by sliding. And, and um, finally I had to, sh you know, uh, he had to admit that uh, the, what I had with the Red Rock Canyon and Valley of Fire was a real problem. Of course it's a problem, but not if you accept it for what really happened, hydrodynamic sorting and, and, and the right, animals yeah. that were in the ecological niches. They were laid down in that yeah. order. They were laid down in that order. And, yeah. you, and, to, uh, and you take the look at the contact line, uh, that's the spot where between the layers that are, um, are supposed to have been shifted over. And if there's a lot of uh, ground up rock and uh, okay. slick and sides and uh, these uh, uh, breccia and uh, things of that sort that would indicate movement, well, that uh, uh, gives you a clue that it actually did move. Now, when we were in. Uh, uh, but we're not seeing that. That's the thing. Right. We're not seeing that. When we were in the Smoky Mountains, we did see, see some of this. Yep. Uh, in uh, the Smoky Mountains, where there is a uh, like a, n a nine mile overthrust <laughs> there. Yep. The top layer is Ordovician, the bottom layer is. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, what was that? Um, Cretaceous, I think it was. It was Cretaceous, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And, and, uh, and it was, uh, uh, but we did see some uh, indication that the, the rock movement had, had occurred. But I think some of that might have even occurred after some of the drying had, or some of the drying had, had begun to happen. Um, and you could see where the yeah. rocks were folded over yep. and uh, uh, that was uh, where you had your fall of man, you remember? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was coming down on the side of the cliff face, and, and I was sh showing up, I said, I don't do this at all, and then I hit some some pothole or something, next thing I yeah, know. Yeah, you tripped over a root. And I did, just doing, doing a head over head, you know, doing, doing a head over heels all the way down, you know. Yep. But, uh, you know what? You can't make any eggs in the omelets unless you crack a few eggs. You gotta try, yeah, so you, gotta, right, yeah. you gotta go out and do some stuff. But, uh, but Doug, I was thinking, even, even that, you know, that you could use in the side of, of movement, but the reality is I still think that most of it, or if not all of it, has to do with how the things were laid down right at the time it happened, not, not, not something moving hundreds and even millions of years after the fact. Guy was explaining that uh, um, uh, the, the evolutionists uh, believe that the, the, these vast sandstone layers were uh, formed with a shallow sea. Shallow seas. Uh, uh, shallow seas, they were, uh, uh, and they would blow up uh, uh, the sand dunes and it would create this vast desert and then the, it would, uh, and the layers of rock, uh, you know, you see all these inner bedding uh, with the, oh, yeah. the layers and it, it looks like it's uh, forming like this and then it, there's another layer on top that goes the other way. And, the uh, guy was uh, disputing this. He was sh showing that there were a lot of features, uh, such as these, uh, uh, where uh, it had to obviously be uh, laid down by water. And and well, they admit uh, with the shallow seas, there was water here. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and so and then when you uh, talk about uh, these ma massive uh, dinosaur graveyards, they always talk about them being buried in the flood. Yeah, and so it's where's the flood? The, where's, the, where's the dispute here? Because what they do, Doug, is they separate this flood from that flood, this region from that region, and they give you, it will, by time and distance, rather than an understanding it was one worldwide flood. Yes, we know there are things that happened post-flood. There were, there were regional floods, and there are still regional floods to some extent. There was volcanism and uh, seismic activity for several hundred years after the flood, probably, that caused a lot of things. Right. But, but most of the stuff seemed to have happened during the period of time of the flood, or, rightly, or right, right after it. You know, that's, that's when most of the stuff would have probably happened. Now, the cutting, Doug, would have been later. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some of the stuff when you see, if you right. see the strata out there and you see rivers down, that, that could have cut, cut, could have cut later on. That's fine. We don't have any problem yeah, with that's that. A, a, most creationists would believe that the Grand Canyon was a post-flood event. Right. Uh, and that uh, you had a... But the strata was not. The strata was the strata not. The strata was not. That was laid in the, during the right. flood. 
And the cutting was post flood, yeah. One thing he was also showing was was like there's a, a formation, uh, a layer of rock they call the Schnebley Hill formation. Yeah, his article was talking about and, that. And it's interesting that it's found there in Sedona, but it was not found in the Grand Canyon. And that's he was also pointing out that mm -hmm. uh, there you can see where uh, some of these strata they actually pinch off and vanish. Uh, and uh, they no longer, uh, you know, you go further down the way, you don't uh, see it anymore. So what happened? Well, so basically you had uh, a layer that was uh, deposited sure. during the flood, yep. but then it uh, had an er erosion event that uh, went, went the other way. You have the tidals. Tidal action, okay. action uh, going back and forth. Oh, that's interesting. Now, when we went and uh, went to Wal Walnut Canyon, you could see you could see that as well. Okay. The, the, the flood deposition in that uh, spot, in my mind, was really uh, quite pronounced because you have have these, and uh, Mike Lord shows the, how the, when you uh, have uh, uh, sand being deposited. They will deposit uh, as the, the flow goes in the one direction. They will deposit uh, in layers, sort of like this. And then, uh, if you have the flow going the opposite direction, it then deposits like this. Sure. Yeah. All kinds of, of that is are shown in. Uh, yes, yeah, water goes over something. And sediments going up. Stuff gets dropped. You know, gets dropped. Uh, even in modern rivers and, and streams, you see, you can see that in a very small microcosmic sort of a way. But and he was um, pointing out that uh, uh, the angle of this, the evolutionists uh, uh, said that it was uh, uh, a certain angle that uh, proved that it was uh, 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 wind-blown sand that would cause this. Oh, and uh, it, but it turned out that they never actually measured this angle in the oh. strata. And it actually fits now uh, the water deposited strand. Really, I, I I didn't remember that. That's yeah. And so uh, they make these statements, uh, and uh, then uh, when you actually look at the data uh, and check it, it uh, doesn't fit their prediction. So many of these things are true. It's like people somebody makes a prediction or a statement based on something. And then you find out nobody can re duplicate the results. Nobody can, nobody can, or when they actually go in and, or what happens is people basically just, just regurgitate what's been written before. Once it gets in print, for whatever reason, it, it becomes almost, it, it, as it becomes codified, mm -hmm. it becomes fact. Like the whole life, for years I was taught four ice ages. Right, yeah. Yeah, and now, of course, now they're, they're going up to about, a, about a, I don't know, 100 of them, 30 of them. It depends which, which, which guy you're talking to. But there's a lot of them they talk about. The fact of the matter is, you know, they've had problems because you have an ice age, supposedly started you know, the first one 100,000 years ago, and the last one has to be more recent than 10,000 years ago. Right, yeah. And that's a long period of time for an ice age to happen. And we, you know, of course, creationists, we did the yeah, Michael Lord again. Uh, mm -hmm. Really did some. He's done yeoman's work on that with the with the Ice Age. He called, they, he's called Mr. Ice Age or the Ice Age Ice Age guy. But uh, but yeah, we had one Ice Age post post flood. You know. And uh, we might as well just uh, tell the theory of that. Uh, you know, Michael Lord talks about warm oceans being uh, uh, after the flood. Uh, even in the Arctic, you had. Um, Creatures such as the mammoth, the mastodon, uh, which really are warm weather creatures. I know. Yeah. For years, I've been all oh, in the in the wool, you know, woolly mammoth because he's protective. No, their their hair, hair does not work. Right. It's, yeah. it's not wool. It's hair. It's a hairy mammoth is better than a woolly mammoth. But anyway, continue, Doug. So go ahead. And if you find tropical vegetation uh, in, in their stomach, right. in, in the uh, soft tissue preserved uh, in, in the Arctic, and, and so um, because we're all, uh, finding soft tissue in dinosaur uh, bones and uh, yeah, collagen. We're finding hemoglobin, DNA, all that stuff. We're finding in dinos. You know, it's and all stuff. that is, it really uh, gives an indication 
Yeah, we find these uh, ginkgo fossils on the surface. On the surface, yep. And, and so when you dig them up, um, just because uh, you find ginkgos doesn't mean it's Cretaceous. It means you find ginkgos in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, not Jurassic, maybe, maybe Triassic. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The reality is, is that what's happening is all these discoveries, Doug. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff you're pointing out that with on our journey, you would talk on that trail, and the the, the geology, the paleontology. The, the stuff we're seeing is, is indicating that we really live in a, I mean, from comparatively, compared to the uniformitarian theory, in a fairly recent earth. You know, the biblical timeline holds water, no pun intended. It, it's, you know, you talk about a world that's, that's less than 6,000 years old, you know, or 6,000 years or, or less, but the, not, 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 not 3.5 billion or 3.6 billion, they keep trying to stretch it back, and life 3.5 billion. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You, you did, nothing seems to add up based on those scenarios. It seemed all very logical when they when they were promoted. When you're when you're when you're a young kid, you're looking at all oh, the dinosaurs lived here, and, and part of that, well, nobody's ever seen a dinosaur that's alive today. But of course, we've talked about that too. There's all kinds of stories. But that's so evolutionists, here, here's yeah. the challenge: uh, what is your smoking gun that tells us that the biblical record isn't uh, it doesn't work? Um, I, I think that um, uh, biblical creationists have really covered all the bases in terms of uh, geology uh, as uh, far as what we observe in the present, uh, giving us an idea of what uh, uh, could have happened. Uh, and we have our explanations for it. And our, and our predictions have been good too, Doug. I mean, from the, from the Mount St. Helens laboratories to, to you could talk one after another. I mean, time's running out right now, so we're not going to get into all that stuff, obviously. But all that is proving some of the predictions <coughs> the creations have been making all along. That it's catastrophism has really played a big part of a lot of the geology. Yeah, geocatastrophism is now the... the uh, the nom rigueur. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 is, it, yeah. it is something that uh, they, uh, the evolutionists play upon, but they uh, don't understand that the, what they're doing is uh, playing into our hand. Well, we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution. We hope you enjoyed our show tonight.